Hey, so it's Saturday. It is brutally cold outside, like unbelievably cold outside. So what better inside project than to do these springs, new springs on the pallet. I didn't even understand <clears throat> how tricky it could be. We did the springs on our international. It was pretty simple. Jack it up under the bolts. We had the springs, we had new U-bolts, we had everything, everything fit like a glove. So we knew on the driver's side of this truck, the springs were quite broke. There was quite a few in the pack that were broke. On the passenger side, you could see the odd broken one. I don't know, I just, I just got it out. But holy man, what a nightmare. So I guess throughout, you know, people's lives, they learn different ways of doing things. The particular person I'm assuming that built this truck to be a grain truck just went full, uh, you know, CYA, right? Could cover yourself. So <clears throat> the pins that hold the box on, you know, normally those you just pound them out. You so you can put a different box on or whatever you want to do. They had welded those in there solid so the pins couldn't come out. Okay. I guess that should have been a red flag about, there's probably some other stuff on this truck that's gonna be tricky. All the bolts, I'm not sure about the U-bolts, I didn't pay too much attention, I ended up just cutting them off because they were so tight. But, uh, so the bolts that go through the bushing on the spring, they actually, yeah, they welded on that too. So, you know, that all had to get cut off. So, after about an hour and a half under there, with the old gas ax, cutting all of this stuff off, then, uh, you know, unfortunate for this truck, while it's around the yard and stuff, it does probably get a little overloaded with things like wheat and peas, eh? I mean, if you fill this right up, it's, you know, it's a lot of weight. So the springs were pounded pretty good up into their mount mounting brackets, so they were like wedged in there. So I had, I, you know, fortunate, <clears throat> fortunate to not be starting out, right? I mean, my mom and dad have been at this their whole life when they bought this place, the shop came with the tools and stuff. So there's like, I don't know, two generations of tools already here. Cause you need everything. I mean, there is shrapnel everywhere, right? There's simplex jacks, bottle jacks, uh, you know, shortened, uh, all the attachments that come with the simplex jack, wrenches from an inch and a half down to half inch, chisels and punches and, and crowbars and well, uh, you know, welding helmets and all, all that stuff. So there is a lot of stuff that a guy needs if you're gonna if you're gonna tackle basically egg on any level and you're not going to just hire out the work, right? I mean you could easily just take this over to a welding shop, take it into a mechanic shop and say change out the springs. You go pick it up. These springs I believe are seven hundred bucks a piece. U bolts will probably be another I don't know, hundred bucks a set. So there's gonna be sixteen hundred dollars right there. It's probably going to be easily sixteen hundred, two thousand dollars in labor because they're going to have to cut all this stuff off too, and struggle and fight and struggle and fight. Have the odd smoke break that probably gets attached to your bill too. So, <clears throat> if that's an option for you, instead of you know, if you, if you don't if you don't have a shop that's all tooled up, maybe it is a better option than trying to go out and buy all this stuff. I don't know, but for me, thankfully, it's all here. This is a nice heated shop, keeps you out of the elements. So. That's good. Anyways, back to this. That's what it looks like now. So I got the truck jacked up pretty high to get that spring out. They're super heavy. Uh, this is where the, the bolt went through the bushing. That bolt was, uh, I don't know, it's kicking around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. So, so there it is. So it probably would have came off except for that they had welded the nut on. So anyways, it had to get cut off. So I'm gonna need I don't think it's really, that's not even a real strong, that's not even a grade 8 bolt. I guess it's only for the bushing, but uh, that, the springs, they all, or the U-bolts, they all got cut off. That's why all, there's all this shrapnel here. This like, um, what else? That's about it. So I got to get that spring out on that side yet, but uh, this is all up high enough. I'm going to grab the wire wheel, just clean this stuff up a little bit. Uh, spray some WD-40 and stuff on there so stuff slides together a little bit he uh, easier because I am by myself today and these springs are super heavy I don't know what they weigh but uh, it's very heavy to uh, 
try to get them up in there over the tire. Also, you end up in kind of like a high risk area because I don't know where it would stop if my jack at the back fell out. I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be enough room for me in between that tire and that uh, truck box. So I'm pretty sure it'd be <sighs> Robin squished like a bug. All right, the uh, spring replacement project is complete. The old springs are out. So they're actually not as damaged as I thought they were. However, like these are broke. These two springs are broke. And uh, you know, this one's broke. Uh, when we did the international, actually the whole pack was broke on the one. So, but certainly, uh, you know, it's going to be better when uh, you don't have any broken springs in the pack. I had a, I had a weird moment last night when I was putting uh, the one side in. I was like, it's, you know, it's been it's been quite a few years since I worked in the oil field, and uh, I'll admit the last couple of years that I worked in the oil field wasn't really a physical position anymore so i got a bit out of shape maybe so i was like wrestling that around and i was like holy man when i did the ones on the international it it went pretty well i thought so uh i figured i just probably should lay off some of the sweets and do a little more uh you know a little more up downs but uh i weighed one of those springs they're 167 pounds so i uh i no longer feel that i'm a uh, out of shape, because that's kind of hard to muscle it into that tiny little space there, because I didn't take the box off or nothing. I just jacked it up a little bit and, uh, and slid them in. So I guess it's going to be my lesson for the day. If you're out and about and you're feeling inadequate and you're thinking like, maybe I used to be able to do this or I should be able to do this, take a step back, actually look at the situation be like, okay, no, that's totally unrealistic. I, you know, it'll be a miracle if I even get this. So don't get down on yourself. Anyways, it's lunchtime for me. I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so it's been a couple days here now. I ran into town yesterday. I got U-bolts built for my springs and a couple of one inch bolts that I need to go in place of where the bushings go. And uh, all in all went pretty good, it's just, still brutally cold out there and it's, it's actually quite windy so when you have your thermometer reading minus 30 all day long and the wind is blowing it's it's one of those situations if you don't need to be outside working you, you just don't you don't be it doesn't make sense to do that better to find an inside job so i'm still working away at this truck i haven't put any of the accessories back on like the tarp the camera and all that mounting hardware but I did finish the uh, springs today and uh, turned out pretty well. So these were the big bolt, uh, the big bolts I had to get for in the in the bushing, and uh, the U bolts that they made. So that's all on. New set of springs, and uh, and, and on the other side. So that's uh, this project is done as far as the heavy lifting. <clears throat> So that's going to be it for me tonight. I'm going to run in and have supper. Uh, but uh, before I go, I wanted to uh, share maybe one lighthearted story. Uh, goes along the lines of, you know, communicating on the farm, the hobby farm, whatever. If you're working with your family, your spouse, your kids, whatever it is. Maybe if you think what you're saying makes sense, it might not make sense to someone else. So what happened here today uh, was funny. I asked my wife, she was helping me put these springs in. The wife, uh, they were out here, her and the kids running around in the shop. And then, uh, so I asked my wife, I said, can you grab me a hammer? I was under putting these springs in. And uh, so she asked her daughter, her daughter's four. And uh, she said, can you go get dad a hammer? And my daughter instantly looked at her and said, what kind of hammer? And, and that actually, you know, that, that kicked something off with me and my wife. So my wife had told me a story a while back about, you know, years ago she was working with her dad. Her dad was doing a job, asked for a hammer. She brought the wrong hammer, ended up getting, you know, was frustrating for both people, right? I mean, so she, she was mad about it that, you know, she brought the wrong hammer and he was frustrated by her bringing the wrong hammer. 
And I had to laugh when she told me that story because my mom told me a story about years ago my dad was doing something and he asked my mom to get a hammer. And uh, she brought the wrong hammer. And I, apparently she, you know, whatever. They went back and forth a little bit about this hammer and she said, you know what, I'm going home, get your own hammer. So my point to this is, you know, maybe as the person, you know, in my case, so, you know, as, as the man, as the person doing the job, putting in the springs or whatever you're doing, if you have a willing helper, you know, be it your spouse, your kids, your parents, you know, whatever, and, uh, you know, they're willing to come out and help, maybe it's better to uh, <clears throat> put a little bit more thought into the questions you're asking, the things you're asking for, because maybe they don't know what you want, right? I mean, we all know there's an infinite amount of hammers. There's hammers for all different types of applications. So instead of asking for a hammer, maybe ask for the proper hammer, you know? Um, and on the other side of that, I will say, because I defended, uh, you know, I defended my dad, I defended my, uh, my father-in-law when, when, when I heard these stories. I thought, you know, if you're willing to help, if you want to come out and help, uh, you know, might be a little bit more important to get a little more involved in the, in the process instead of just kind of being a warm body standing there, I guess. So, you know, and, and an example of that would be, you know, like if, if the person you're trying to help is building something out of wood and, they, and using nails and they say, can you bring me a hammer? It probably wouldn't make sense to bring them a chipping hammer off of the welding table because they're more likely than not are looking for a claw hammer, at least something relatable to woodworking. You know, if they're if they're working on a, a piece of uh, metal or, or trying to straighten something, they probably and they ask for a hammer. They probably don't want a claw hammer or a, you know a, a sheet metal hammer or something like that. So, uh, anyways, that was just a funny thing I guess that happened today. You know that uh, you know such such a, a, a young mind not programmed anything I'm, like I'm talking about my daughter that you know she would she would rationalize so quickly to to ask what kind of hammer you know what kind of hammer does he want so something to think about when you're uh, you know when you're working away on your on your farm your hobby farm if you're you know if you have uh, you know a, a, sh uh, a business that your your spouse is involved in you know mechanic business you know shop could be anything just uh, you know on both parties let's you know Maybe do a little better communicating what we want and uh, do a little bit better to, you know, actually if you're willing, if you, if you want to help and you're willing to help, be a little, uh, be a little more involved, a little in the moment. So, uh, but anyways, that's enough for me. I'm going to head in, going to have supper. So as always, to those who are watching, thank you. If there's any new people, welcome. And uh, we will catch you all on the next one.